Yes, 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 it's finally happened and I'm happy to welcome you. It was so much work in the free bike service school. This school will be made of 35 lessons about and it's going to be for men, women, people from all over the world. And because it's a school and not simply binge watching YouTube, I'm gonna ask you three questions at the end of each lesson, which means that at the end of the school, you will know the answer to over 100 very important questions regarding bike maintenance. If you want to graduate and get a certificate from me, be present on each weekly lesson. And on the first one, we're talking about pumping the tires. We'll learn how flexible the inner tube is, how the tire pressure translates to speed and comfort and how does Nino Schroeder check it. We'll also learn what the snake bike is. Oops. And how to use such a mini pump in order to pump two types of the valves. And here are three types of bicycle pumps. A mini pump, a floor pump, and a cordless inflator. Let's see how much time it takes to pump a trail big tire with each of these. Go! Boom! A floor pump, go! Haha! -ha. Boom! It's faster! Go! Go Danny! Go Danny! Stop! Ta da! <laughs> Quick sum up this was the fastest. This was a little slower. This is the slower. If you don't want to spend money for anything bigger, you just have one bike and you sometimes ride it. This is a must have. This is a must have for somebody who's training regularly, riding regularly, having two, three bikes. This will be much more comfortable for pumping many tires. But of course, for bicycle workshops, a compressor would be the best option. It's also good to know that there are some floor pumps which will have special chamber for inflating a tubeless system. And now I'm going to show you something interesting from Milkit. First we pump to 11 bars. And two types of the valve. This one is thinner. This is the Presta valve. This cap is only a protection against dirt. It's easy to lower the pressure, let the air out. For the tubeless system, it's best thing to have the Presta valve with removable core. Removing the core of the valve will allow you to blow a lot of the air through it so that you can seal your tubeless tire, just like this. This is the standard ending for this kind of valve. For my cordless inflator, I need to use the adapter because this doesn't fit. You don't want to bend this one. And this is a thicker shredder valve. Press the valve, shredder valve. The problem you can come across is that maybe in your rims there are only thinner holes for this type of valve and then you get flat tire and you want to replace it with this type of valve and it won't go through. So you should know it on the first level of our school. Here we can let the air out like this. 
This is the end for the shredder. Some pumps will have a simple switch from shredder to presto valve. And this mini pump, will this fit shredder also? Yes, all you need to do is this. Press the hole, shredder hole. Mm -hmm. Press the shredder. It's time for a small experiment. How much air can we pump into this inner tube before it explodes? All we learn from this is that things blow up under pressure. Oh man, these are flexible. Now we're going to go outside where I show you how much faster you're gonna be riding your bike with the correct air pressure. The pressure too low. And we'll see how far we go. Note how many cyclists use this low tire pressure. It hardly accelerates. We're gonna do three approaches on the slide downhill. Okay, we're gonna do one bar. We'll see what the one bar does. I noticed a huge difference in the acceleration right away. Okay, this was much better, but it's not the optimal tire pressure for my weight, which is 74 kilograms today. So I'm gonna do the optimal one and we'll see how we go. It says on this particular tire, minimum pressure is 40 PSI, maximum 65 PSI, uh, uh, or in bars 2.6, I think up to 4.5, which is a lot. I think 2.6 will be enough for me. Uh huh. This is where we stop for the second time. And even I myself was blown away by the difference in the distance I could cover on these three tire pressures. Whoa. It's time to look at the results. This was the first stop far away from the third one on the low pressure. This is the second one, one bar, and the right one. The correct tire pressure does play a big role. Before we move on to the next experiment with the water, it's time for the Nino Shooters method for finding out the correct tire pressure for your mountain bike. You put your thumb just throughout the width of the tire and then you push it with the weight of your body. If you're able to touch with your thumb the rim itself, that means you have the correct tire pressure or at least not too high. If you can't, you have too much air. Mm-hmm. Just remember that Nino Schurter was showing that method on his 2.4 Maxxis tires with the tubeless system. If you have the inner tube inside and or a thinner tire, that means you need to have a higher pressure. This is why it's always good to check it on the curb. We know already that too low tire pressure on the tarmac, for example, will lead to higher rolling resistance, which means we, we are going slower or we need to push harder to the pedals. Uh, on the cars, for example, the tires would even get hot. But it's not always the case. On the trails, for example, sometimes lower pressure is better, it's faster. On the trace, we want the tire to be really plush so that we don't get this vibration, but we go smoother forward. Let's take my bike, some water and a pail in order to check on the gravel road how much water will stay in it with the correct tire pressure and then with a high tire pressure. I'm gonna fill it in and go down the hill. Ooh. The suspension was locked. Let's check out with the caliper how much water is left. It's 63 millimeters almost. And the same thing on the same slope with the 2.5 bars. 
I felt the difference. Higher pressure meant harsh ride and more water spilled. And finally the road bike, the racing bike. Here the important thing is that checking the pressure with your fingers doesn't really make much sense because there is so little air volume in these tires that it might seem to be hard but it will fail on a curb test. And it indeed feels very hard, but you will see there's not enough air inside. <laughs> 60, way too little. So my advice for you is pumping to 85 PSI's and then check it how it works for your weight. This is the curb test. Oh, this is way too little. I can snake bite it very easily. Here I have 85 PSI's. And we are going to conclude our lesson with the snake bite flat. I'm gonna show you how it works. As you can see, the curb test shows the tire pressure is too low. Oops. And you see, when you want it to happen, it doesn't happen. I have damaged the rim, broken some spokes, but there's no flat tire. And this is our snake bite, the rim, will cut through the inner tube and usually we'll get a symmetrical two holes uh, in the inner tube. You see one is right here, it's here. The other one is here, it's a little hole here. Usually it's rather a cut than a hole. That means the tire pressure was too low. Boom, the damage is done so I guess I'll be leaving. And I'm leaving you with three questions. Number one and two will be the true or false. And number three, you can write whatever you want about it. Okay, number one. The Nino Schurter's method for checking the correct tire pressure on the mountain bike works for his body weight only. True or false? One T or one F? Number two. When we lower the tire pressure on our bike, we will always higher the rolling resistance. So the bike will be slower. Two, true or false? And number three, what is the curb test? Thank you for being with me throughout our first lesson and see you next week on the second one.